What's up, Bug Doug with Dini in the garage. I got a crack in my radiator. It's not in the uh, metal, in the fins. Uh, it's in the plastic along the sides. So my first thought was, well, let's try to fix it before we have to just buy a new one. I was gonna just JB weld it. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with JB weld, but I found out JB weld actually makes a radiator repair kit. It comes with a few extra things that the normal JB weld kit does not come with. So we are gonna give this a shot today. Let's go look at the leak. All right, now obviously the first uh, step is going to be to find your leak. Um, you're probably gonna have to do that with the vehicle running, wait till it gets up to temperature, and then you should be able to see it coming uh, out of anywhere. Uh, you might have to rev the engine up a little bit, get some coolant really moving through there. Be careful, coolant obviously is uh, hot. You don't wanna just be poking around the engine bay. <clears throat> I found mine, it's right on the side here of my radiator. You can kind of see where that line of wetness is. That's <clears throat> the coolant seeping out. And when I get the engine under load, it, it squirts out. Uh, this is not a guaranteed fix, but I'm going to give it a shot. First thing you have to do, obviously, get some stuff out of the way so that you can get to the affected area. <clears throat> one of the reasons I'm using the JB one instead of Q-Bond, which is another similar product, is Q-Bond is a powder that you put on and then put an activating agent on top of it. I'd have to take the radiator out, and I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to give this one a shot. Uh, first thing, like I said, get everything out of the way. I did that. You're probably gonna have to remove your upper radiator hose to drain some fluid at least below the level of the crack. That should be obvious. I'm gonna take this rag here, put it inside my radiator to ensure that I'm not gonna get anything in there during this process because that's it's gonna defeat the whole purpose. Now I know full well there's a relatively good chance I'm gonna end up buying a new radiator anyway. Uh, this isn't gonna work, but it was a $12 fix. New radiator is like 120 bucks and a full afternoon of work, so we're gonna give this one a shot. Um, yeah, let's go look at the package and find out what step one is. Here's what the kit comes with. You have got, this is the two part epoxy. I'm pretty sure this is just your average high heat um, JB weld. Uh, what's different about this kit is it is in fact the high heat, high pressure stuff. Uh, it comes with this piece of fiberglass and it comes with this little application brush uh, and some 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, now, for $12, I mean, you could probably put this kit together yourself, but I wanted to test this one. I wanted to see how it uh, how it works. Directions are on the back. First step is preparation. They want you to clean the area real well, and they actually want you to dig into that crack a little bit, not all the way through, but they want you to make a little V um, along that crack so that the JB weld has some place to go inside. So what I think we're gonna do is get the Dremel out and get a little uh, ball gouge. Got the Dremel, and I think we're gonna give this a try right here. It's a uh, stone. The ball gouge I have is real small. I'm worried it might get away from me. So we're gonna try this first, get right on that corner there, roughen up the whole area, because obviously JB Weld adheres better to a rough surface, and also uh, try to open up that crack a little bit so that the JB Weld has somewhere to go. All right, what I did was I scratched up this whole area so that I've got a good uh, scuffed up area for the um, JB Weld to try to adhere to. I dug into that crack a little bit. The key, any tool you're using, you're gonna to want to be on a low speed. This plastic is nylon, that's what they use on radiators. It melts around 400 degrees. If you start melting gouges in this, you're gonna make a bigger mess. So nice low speed. Um, I got it on about a quarter of the power this Dremel can do. And just slowly dig away and uh, scuff up the area. Let's see if we can get a better shot of what it looks like now. So as you can see, I scuffed up the whole area, the whole length of the crack. It actually makes the crack easier to see. There were some spots I couldn't quite get with the Dremel tool. So now I'm gonna take that 800 grit sandpaper they gave me and scuff up those little areas like in here where I couldn't quite get before. I'm gonna clean the whole area down now with, um, this is uh, just rubbing alcohol. I know acetone works a little better. <clears throat> I don't have any acetone with me right this minute. So, I'm use alcohol. We're gonna get uh, all the grit from the things I just sanded. Any last remaining little bit of um, coolant that might be on the area where we're gonna work. The key here is, obviously, if there's grit and old coolant or engine grease or any other foreign substance, it's gonna affect how this will uh, adhere. You gotta use something like acetone or alcohol that evaporates. You don't wanna use soap and water because well, you'd be there all day waiting for it to dry. Next thing we wanna do is figure out how our fiberglass is going to fit. They gave us this big piece, but I'm not gonna need it all. 
I'm gonna probably try to bring it up onto this round part a little bit and down in there. But I'm gonna need to cut it here and here so they can fit around this bracket. So let's get some scissors. All right, I found the world's worst scissors, but I think we can make them work. I'm not gonna worry about the bottom. I'm gonna let it be as big as it wants to. I think we're gonna cram some JB Weld down in there. All right, let's go back over to the bench and get our JB Weld mixed up. All right, oddly, the directions don't seem to actually call for you to wear gloves, and I never do this, y'all know me. Uh, I'm not a fan of working in gloves, but I'm putting gloves on. I do not feel like having epoxy on my hands for the next two weeks. It says, I'm gonna tell you everything because it's time sensitive from here on out. I'm gonna tell you, and we're gonna go over to the Jeep and we're just gonna do it. Apparently you squeeze this package and it breaks this inner seal so that you can mix everything in here. Then you cut the package open, um, apply half to the bottom, put the fiberglass on, put half on the top. This is where I want my glove because I wanna be able to really push it into those areas. And it says you let it sit for 30 minutes. All right, like I said, from here on out, it's gonna be real time. I'm not gonna be able to mess with the camera. Okay, there you go. Let's get all this into there. And it said we just need it for 30 seconds. I need you now. Let's make sure we've got all of it. It's very important that this stuff is mixed together totally and completely. Um, it's very important that you mix all of the two ingredients. They need to be mixed in full quantities. All right, I think we're about there. Cut this thing with the world's worst scissors. Take our application brush. Oh, come on, man. Oof. Yeah, it's got that epoxy smell. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm gonna clather it up. I'm glad that I thought to put on gloves. This is already a bigger mess and I haven't even got to the messy part. Now a lot of people, when they use JB Weld to fix a radiator, that's all they do. The only thing they do is just do JB Weld like what I just did. So I'm thinking this is gonna work. Get this all packed in there and like get the uh, JB Weld integrated with the, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. There's gonna be leftover and it's gonna look like a terrible mess. Afterwards, I will go in there and I will cut off the excess. But for right now, we're just gonna slither it up. It doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it freaking holds. So the kit was $12. The radiator's $120. If this works, there's no doubt in my mind it was worth $12. Even if it doesn't work, it was worth the try. You know what I mean? I did one of these. Oh, we've got a video on Cat Clean that can sometimes cure your O2 sensor codes. And I get so many people who are like, that didn't work, it was a waste of $20. Yeah, but if you, it did work, it saved you from spending $300 on new cats. So like, give it a shot, you know, why not? Why wouldn't you try? All right, I think I've got just about all of this applied. We're gonna wait for this, we're gonna wait 30 minutes for this to be nice and cured. Uh, something interesting that, it, it actually started getting warm. I had to put the bag down. This chemical reaction that's happening is actually heating up the plastic, uh, the nylon. Um, so it's gonna fuse everything together and it's gonna have that fiberglass in there to hold it together. If I didn't screw it up by pulling the bottom out accidentally down there, this just might do it, just might. So in 30 minutes, uh, we'll be back to see how it looks. It's been about a half hour and it was very hard to see in here. Am I happy with the repair? Yes. Am I confident? I'm kind of annoyed with myself that I was fidgeting with it and kind of screwed up a little bit, but this stuff, I mean, it's hard. It's rock hard. It's got all this stuff in there. It's, it's done now. Uh, you can tell the epoxies when it's not tacky and it's just, I mean, it's like solid and feels like a rock, uh, you know it's done. So we're gonna pull out this. Thankfully, I didn't found some way to not glue that onto the thing. We're going to get our radiator hose and hook that back up. Now I am going to, I drove this thing for about an hour last night, more than an hour with the, um, with it leaking, so I lost a ton of fluid. I'm gonna slowly add it. I also screwed up my screwdriver, can you see that? I'm such an idiot. I wasn't as well prepared if I had known, I've never really handled JB Weld. If I knew how hot it was gonna get, I would have not fidgeted with it. I didn't, I didn't understand fully uh, just how much it was going to um, really make that chemical reaction and melt the um, the radiator uh, plastic and everything, had I realized that, 
I would not have fidgeted with it. I wasn't prepared, so I screwed up my screwdriver a little bit. I got it all over the place. It's certainly not a pretty fix, but if it works, I could care less. Let's clamp this guy down. I originally, the reason I got two hose uh, clamps on here is originally I thought it was just a leaky hose. So it was a hairline crack. Uh, so I put this hose clamp on in addition to the, um, the compression clamp and I am going to put them both on to continue. And the reason I'm doing that is I've changed the shape of this inlet a little bit by adding the JB weld, some of it's over into where the hose goes and I'm worried it'll have trouble sealing around those irregularities. So we're going to put everything back on this Jeep. We're gonna start it up, see if it works, and we'll do a recap. All right, friends, so I filled it up. I uh, took it around the block, I had to go down to the store, get oil. Wife's making fried chicken for dinner, uh, and it did not work. It slowed the leak down considerably. And if uh, this were a beater, I just might say screw it. Um, whereas I was, you know, losing a significant amount. I can't even really see it leaking, I just see the steam uh, coming from down there. So somewhere along that patch job, it's not totally sealed and a little steam's coming out. More than likely, the more time goes on, the worse that's gonna get. Let's see, can you guys see the steam? Yeah, you can see it uh, coming up there. So I think if it was in a different spot that didn't have so many dimensions to it, you know, that had the, the inlet up here and then it had the, um, what should we call it? The uh, bracket down there. So gonna go for the new radiator, probably a good idea anyway. So I did waste $12 today. Waste is a one way to put it, I suppose. Um, it just didn't work this time. Uh, I've been lucky the past few times. Uh, would it make more sense to just get yourself some fiberglass mesh and some high heat JB weld? Yeah, probably. Um, if you're in a pinch and you need to grab it real quick, I'll tell you what, this would be interesting to have to maybe just keep this kit or make a kit like this uh, from your own stuff to just keep in there for guys who wheel out in the desert and stuff where uh, a blown radiator really stops you dead. Um, I might try it again, though if I do do it again, I'm not going to buy the kit. I'm just going to buy high heat JB weld and buy some fiberglass mesh and do it all myself. If I had known going into this that my crack was actually that long and not a little guy like that, uh, I might have been less confident this was going to work. Um, I think it's possible it would have worked if I didn't screw up that bottom by messing with it if I just left it. So uh, not a success today, but I'm not in any way upset with this product. They even say on the back, for cracks up to four inches or less and holes up to a quarter inch in diameter. Um, so we were pushing the bounds there anyway. Um, and it just wasn't clean. If it had been able to just be a patch right on without all the extra dimensions and geography there, I think it might have worked. So if you got any questions, by all means, leave me a comment down in the squat boxes. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. I told you.